working environment needs to be fun. Everything you're doing in life needs to be fun. Again. How do we support our own institutions? How do we support our own businesses? We feel that with the black man spending $20 billion a year, not setting up any business. What's good? Welcome to another episode of It's Black is Lit. I'm your host, Town, here on location at the Technology Center Studios at the University of Arkansas. And today I'm posted up with my boy, uh, Jason Howard, aka Wavy J. How's it going? Man, doing good, bro. Appreciate you stopping by the show with us today. No doubt, bro. I'm excited to be here, man. Thanks for having me. No doubt. All right, so, uh, Jay, tell us a little bit about where you're from and how you ended up here at the University of Arkansas. Mm. I came to Fayetteville, Arkansas by way of Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Um, born and raised, Pine Bluff Zebras. Shout out to them to them Zebra alums. And uh, I came here for, for um, school, so probably around 2009. And since then, it's just been uh, working at the U of A, making connections. And also as a place where I kind of started my artistry here. So uh, Fayetteville is sentimental to me. It's kind of like home. Already. All right, so uh, talk to me a little bit about your music. Uh, how did you get interested in being a music entertainer and uh, why is music such a passion for you? All right, so the answer has two different answers. So it's kind of like, uh, for my love for music, it originated kind of like when I was a little boy. So it uh, it ran in my family. Like my, my grandpa, he was a gospel singer. Uh, he, um, in his group called Spiritual Five, he was the lead tenor. Um, they used to like open up for acts like uh, Shirley Caesar. They, they'll go, you know, they'll, they'll uh, travel in Arkansas and surrounding um, states, and um, so they, they open up for a lot of big name uh, gospel artists. So the the singing and just music in general, that kind of ran in my blood, uh, and it just came from like listening to the radio and you know like you, you just hearing and you like, how can I do that? So you know, I think I think it uh it uh that was that started the initial appreciation of it and how I created it and wanted to be an artist became like trying to imitate the radio. And uh, I remember when I was a little kid, I was kind of like a shy kid and I had like some friends and they'll be like, hey man, like you need, you know, like, like you can sing, like you need, to, you need to sing more, you can actually sing. And I was like, I don't, I didn't think I could because who knows they can sing or who knows they have talent until they know it, you know? Right. So, um, but I just started pursuing it. Um, started out initially as singing. And then uh, when I got a little bit older, I started rapping. Uh, so it kind of literally turned into that T-Pain, like a rapper turned singer, because I, I initially found my passion for it again. Um, but I still like to rap on the side, so. Already, no, yeah. you're just flexing your talents, man. Everybody yes, has uh, many talents. That's right. But, you know, it's still in the lane of music, so it's definitely still in your passion area, mm -hmm. you know. So um, talk to me a little bit about uh, the vision that you have for your music artistry and uh, what are some of the steps that you're taking to get there? Yes, sir. Well, off top, I got to say, um, my music, my goal is to help people. I know that's so cliche to say, and if I'm being specific with it, it's to help people from my town, uh, Pine Bluff, uh, surrounding areas, Little Rock, people that uh, feel like they don't have a voice, um, people that feel like, oh yeah, I, I don't have anything to do, like nobody believes in what I want to do and my grind, so let me go, you know, throw my life away. Um, I went to school with people that threw their life away. You know, in some areas of my life, I threw my life away because um, I personally just didn't think that my life was of value. Um, so off top with my music, I want to, um, if I can just help a couple people who can help a couple people realize, hey man, your life got some value. Like, you know, maybe a song might make them realize that they want to do music or maybe a song might make them realize that they want to be a, a coach. I don't care what it is, but to bring purpose, first of all, to people from my area who needed purpose. And then um, also, man, I mean, honest, I just want to be great. Um, I love to be a songwriter in a, in a songwriter hall of fame. Um, I feel like my artistry can like um, touch different aspects. Um, I, I uh, it'd be nice to make, make it as an artist in the hall of fame um, to be one of the greats that I came up on. You know, the Marvins and the Teddy Pendergrass and the Luthers and the and the, the list just goes on and on. The Michael Jackson, just basically. The people uh, that I grew up on just add into the notch. Right. And why not? Why, why can't we? You know, why, why can't you be a great filmmaker? Right. You know, why can't I be a great artist? Like, 
Um, I mean, people did it before us. The right. blueprint's there. We just gotta, you know, read that blueprint and then adjust it to our own. Right. That's what I'm thinking. And I think that's a really big thing that you hit on because, you know, I heard you mention that you were influenced uh, and, and learned a passion for music by listening to the radio and that's then right. beginning to imitate the people that you uh, heard on the radio and saw on TV, mm -hmm. uh, the music artists that you saw. So you're trying to be a positive image for uh, music artists and up and coming music artists to look up to, especially from uh, your town and areas that uh, are like your town, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, with that being said, what is some advice that you would have for uh, somebody that's aspiring to become a music entertainer? Well, man, uh, first of all, I'll say uh, be authentic and not just in a in a um, you know general sense because people can you know smell uh, BS from a mile away it's not just because of that but music and other art forms um, it should it should tell a story it should you know, if it is your story or, or uh, people around you story or your family story no matter what it should be therapeutic and how can something be therapeutic if you're giving BS to it you know how can something how can something bring life? If it doesn't come from life, if, if it does, if it doesn't come from hope and and putting your own emotions into it, so I'll say first of all, you know I know it's 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 uh, super easy to follow the trends. I know it's super easy to wanna to do what you already hear in this out. But you think about it on a logical standpoint, bro. How can you be what's already out? You have to think ahead. You have to be what hasn't been out yet. And the best way to do that is to what for whatever craft you're doing. It's to put what you've already been instilled with, and and uh, put that with the combination of learning and having the right people around you and the right attitude. And then for the second standpoint, I'll say treat treat what you want to do as a business before it's a business. Because if you love what you, if you love to work, you're gonna go harder at working. That, that's what I say. So so I'll just say treat it like a business before um, it's a business. Um, Sam Cooke said in his documentary, he said that he um, he knew he had to be a voice for those who couldn't speak. He had to be a voice for those who couldn't talk. And so, if you're able to put those together while still being you, man, the sky's the limit. Yeah, that's powerful. And I just want to give hope to, to anybody who needs it. All right. So, tell us where we can find you online or where can we follow your work? That's right. So. My Facebook and my um, SoundCloud is the same. It's Jason Space Wavy Space J Space Howard, and on uh, uh, on Instagram it's Wavy A Seven O. Giving shout out to the Palm Bluff, but uh, I'm not hard to find. I mean, I do weddings, clubs, churches, and also um, I'm definitely down for collaborating. I just want to see people, um, you know, build up. And if there's anything I can help, I'm down. Already. Well, man, we definitely appreciate you taking the time to stop by the show with us today. Everybody be sure to go follow Wavy J at those social media feeds. That's right. And uh, we definitely are appreciative of you and excited to see you be the visionary that creates change for people like you and me. Thank you, bro. So uh, up next on this Blackest Lip, we're going to have uh, today's edition of Get Out Your Feelings and our word of the day. What's good? I'm town. It's time to get out your feelings. Yeah. Brain drain is an interesting topic um, in the black community. Most times, black communities in America are at or below the poverty line. Uh, most hoods that people come from, uh, they tend to want to leave and never return. But this adversarial stance towards the communities that raised us is problematic because we tend to look at these situations as being hopeless. And in reality, communities are made of people and people can be helped. If people can be helped, communities can be changed and improved. There is a perception of lack of economic opportunity, which is uh, unbased, it's, it's, it's unsound because uh, if you look at somebody just in the, in the community that I come from, um, in Little Rock, Arkansas, there's a lady named Annie Abrams. Uh, Annie Abrams has stayed on 1928 Wolf Street since uh, the 1960s and she's never left. Um, no matter how bad the community has gotten, she's never left and 
she received the support and protection of the people from within that community. Annie Abrams has traveled the world. She's been to every state in this country. She's been to many countries around the world. She has Secret Service clearance, which one of few people alive have today. She knows presidents on a first name basis, but she still reads coffee on her porch every morning and talks to the people that walk by, whether they prostitutes or whether they pimps or whatever they got going on. She still talks to them like people. And because of that, she has the ability to help her community and improve a black community in inner city Little Rock because she never has taken that uh, approach to where she has to leave in order to try to better herself or, or better her family situation.